Hello and welcome to La Vida Football. My name is Luis Laureano. I'm a UEFA B licensed coach currently living and coaching in Germany. In this video, we're going to discuss the differences and similarities between the 4-3-3 high press and the 4-2-3-1 high press, both against a 4-2-3-1 formation. We're going to begin by looking at the formations and how they line up. If you look at the defensive part, here we have a four versus three, or even a five versus three if the number six comes down to help. In the center of the pitch, there is an equal number distribution, three versus three, six, eight, and 10 on both sides. And up front, a numerical disadvantage, of course, of four versus three, or even five or six versus three. If one of the center defensive midfielders drops back, or if both center defensive midfielders drop back. Okay, so that could be a numerical disadvantage there so this is the 4-3-3 against a 4-2-3-1 and this is how they match up okay now let's take a look at how the 4-2-3-1 matches up against a 4-2-3-1 okay so in the back we have a 4 versus 3 or like i previously mentioned if one or both center defensive midfielders drop back and it could be a 5 or even a 6 versus 3 in the center of the pitch like in the 4-3-3 versus the 4-2-3-1 matchup it's a 3 versus 3 only difference is you have two center defensive midfielders versus one one and of course one center attacking midfielder versus the two center defensive midfielders whereas in the 4-3-3 you have two players to match up with the two center defensive midfielders and then a one versus one with the number six and number ten okay so that is a difference but again it's still a three versus three with respect to matching up numerically and the same thing on the other end a numerical disadvantage of three versus four or could be up to six versus three okay so then that is also a possible ability on the other end okay just things to consider and now let's get started okay so let's take a look at the 433 and how the 433 would start the press right so in the 433 we will have everyone push up of course so the 7 and the 11 would be next to the number 9 that everybody will push up okay so then here we have everybody pushed up okay so here while everybody's pushed up some key points to consider so we have the three forwards that are the they're essentially to put the pressure on immediately okay but what's key with the two offensive midfielders is that there is a gap in between the forwards in which the number eight and the number 10 can step in between or to help cover any passes through the middle or even to anticipate or intercept the ball should it be passed through the middle as well okay so the outsides are taken care of by the number two and the number three here on the outsides number four and five are covering the center this is essentially how it's going to look okay so it's also important to consider where the ball is of course if the ball is a little bit more to our right side then we automatically start the shift over to the right side we don't want to stay center because then we're not in balance anymore with respect to where the ball is okay so we're trying to win the ball back so we want to cover spaces and angles that are available depending on the ball's position again if it's centered then we are centered if it's on one of the sides then we shift over and you know put a little bit more pressure on the side so let's add the opponents here okay so here we are with the opponents we're gonna have the ball be on one of the sides so again depending on where the ball is that is going to determine how we are going to position ourselves initially right okay so if the ball again is in the center then we are centered if, it, if it's on the right left then that would determine where we're going okay so let's assume the ball is on their right side so our left side then of course we will already start moving slowly okay start already anticipating that the ball is going to go to that side okay and what allows us to already shift over as well is the distance between the ball and the player on the left side because the length between player and ball is, is further then of course we have a little bit more time to get there should the pass come in this case to the number four then our number seven would be there to add that pressure immediately okay so because the ball is on this side the number three is ready there and can essentially push up a little bit still in the middle still on the inside of the number two and the number seven okay but with a little bit more pressure up top should the pass go to that side okay well, our number eight will also assist number 10 will cover the number 10 allowing the number six some space so that the number four can shift over and the six again that space would allow either to help the number 10 or to drop back and help the number five that little bit of freedom would be important for us to have with the number six there so again i mentioned earlier that the number eight and the number 10 have space in between the forwards so here the number 
eight can pressure the number six and the number 10 can pressure the number eight there okay but if we're shifting over then the coverage changes now the number 10 has to be covered there seven has to take care of number eight and number four should the ball go to number four and the number nine is keeping eye on number six and the goalkeeper okay number eight is now in between 11 and nine keeping an eye on number six and essentially covering any pass here through the middle but the player options there is a number 10 and number seven who wouldn't come there but the number six should be able to, to see that already okay let's begin with some movements with the high press as soon as the pass is made the pressure begins so here is what's important the number nine covers the pass to the goalkeeper number 11 covers the pass here to the number six so angled run forcing the number five to carry the ball further to the outside or forcing the number five to pass to the number two okay with that in mind number 11 again should theoretically not allow the number six to get the ball that being said the number eight can add a little bit more pressure there to assist with adding pressure to the number two should the number two get a ball and then number four can further shift over six would shift over 10 would shift over number two would now cover the center and help out with the number 10 and number five would securely stay in the back because of this pressure we essentially can push up but we never really want to allow the number five to be in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the number nine but in this case it's going to be very difficult for the number five to get a pass over the head of our center back so in this case it's okay because we are adding pressure the number four is still in a position to drop back and and help the number five should a long ball come okay but again because of the angles that would be very difficult to do and it wouldn't be so easy with the high pressure and a high press so now number eight is alone but covering that space in between the five and the two when the pass comes the number three should already be in way to take the ball away number eight should be in a position to help the number three to create a two versus one outnumbering situation there number four should be adding a little bit more more pressure number six should be coming in as well and then everything just kind of falls into place where we suffocate the opponents by covering them in that position okay so those are the movements essentially to get and create a trap on the outside now let's take a look at how it would look with a four two three one okay so here we have a four two three one during a high press we would get everybody up the number 11 and 7 would go next to the number 9 number 10 would drop behind the number 9 essentially being in a position where they could go in between the 11 and 9 or being in a position where they can go in between the 7 and 9 okay so not too far behind but essentially a little bit behind to help out in the center the 6 and 8 push up because now we have two center defensive midfielders versus the 433 that only has one three and two go up similar movements of course but here we have the center attacking midfielders thing behind the number nine so like i just mentioned the number 10 could go in between the 11 and 9 and in between the 7 and nine to help out and essentially create a line of four right adding more pressure than the 433 would because you have a little bit more security with the two center defensive midfielders okay so they wouldn't be that far apart they'd be a little bit closer together and here it would be essentially always covering the midfield okay the center of the pitch should always be covered with this formation that is essentially why you have two center defensive midfielders to essentially protect and to have support on the offense but most importantly to be secure in the center of the pitch okay so this could could essentially be a 4-2-4 when doing a high press but at the beginning of it it will be a 4-2-1-3 okay now let's add the opponents and see how it compares with the 4-2-3-1 so here same thing as it was with the 4-3-3 depending on where the ball is would determine how we position ourselves if the ball is a little bit more to the left and of course we shift over to the left their players would essentially shift over to the left as well except for the center backs the center backs would just stay open and be ready for a pass but fullbacks would be adjusting to where the ball is as well players up here would also be adjusting to where the ball is as well okay so those are just things that we will anticipate there okay so now if the ball is a little bit more to the left then like i mentioned we're shifting over and we try to anticipate where the ball is going to go and where we're going to make our trap so now we add that pressure and here we are so when that pass is made to the number four similar to the 433 the number nine would cover the pass back to the goalkeeper the number seven an angled run to 
to cover the number eight. Number 11 is here to help and support. Staying behind the number nine because this position allows us to cover the center, but also the other side should the ball go to the other side, which is a difficult pass to make, right? You would have to make a pass over the goalkeeper, through the goalkeeper, but at the same time with a little bit of pressure with our number nine there. So this pass is essentially possible, but our number 11 should be in a position where they can get to that ball and add a little bit of pressure, not allow that to escalate too much, okay? But the number four should have one option and that is to go to the outside. And that pressure is coming through the number seven with that angled run. We are shifting over now that we have that in place. Our number two is gonna add pressure to the number three. The number three most likely move into a position where they have space to, to receive the ball and take a touch or essentially make a one touch pass. So they would draw back, but the number two would be essentially there little by little taking those steps and being ready for when that ball comes. Okay, number six would help and support. Number 10, shift over. Number eight, cover the center of the pitch. Like I said, very important. In this case, covering the number 10, should they get the ball? Okay, so now we're in a position where, okay, now the number three has the ball. Number seven, as soon as that pass is made, covering the pass on the outside and also adding a little bit of pressure. Number six and number two are there to stop that progression. And depending on where the number three is, if the number three is farther back, then that pressure is going to be coming from the two and the seven. If the three is higher up the pitch, then the pressure will be coming from that number two and the number six, or the number six would be there and the number eight would be left essentially open there for the number 11 and the number 10 would be shifting over there to create a little bit more pressure and helping the number two while the number six is covering the center, but also anticipating a pass to the number seven. Okay, so that is a little bit of a difference there essentially because we have options when we have two center defensive midfielders, we have the option of having the number 10 or the number six or on the other side, the number 10 or the number eight to be the players to add and support to create the trap. Whereas in the 4-3-3, it's kind of set in stone because of the formation. Let's take a look back. So because of the three midfielders being in more or less of a, of a line, and here the importance is that we have one player back, right? So when the number six is shifting, the number 10 will be there, but we're not set up to have two center defensive midfielders. So that isn't the importance there, but we do have these two attacking midfielders. So there is a difference. So for example, when the pass was made to the number two, our number three and our number eight were there. Okay, but the number six and the number 10 would have stayed back because here our number four would have been the one to put that pressure and everybody else would be shifting over. So the number six was meant to essentially stay and, and cover the center of the pitch rather than to be the one to put the pressure on and to be the one to create the outnumbering situation. Okay, because of it, the number six positions as a center defensive midfielder, they would essentially stay back. So by doing that, the number 10 would be able to push up and put pressure on the number six, help out on the offensive high press. Should we recover the ball, the number 10 is in a good position to help with the attack. The number two would shift more to the inside, cover the middle and help the number six or our center defensive midfielder protect the center of the pitch, allowing the number four to attack the number seven. Okay, so that is a bit of a difference having only one center defensive midfielder. That is a key difference versus a four, two, three, one, right? Because with two center defensive midfielders, you can essentially move on to the outsides and you will be okay. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's looking at some details that are similar and different with a high press employed with a 4-3-3 versus with a 4-2-3-1. Again, the opponents were set up in a 4-2-3-1 formation. And I always do this because a lot of teams nowadays play with the 4-2-3-1. But if you guys would like a similar video with a different formation, please comment that in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys and your support. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. And I'll see you guys soon. Ciao.